When you install NVIDIA drivers, they used to install with a program that was optional called the GeForce Experience. But however, nowadays with the recent release of their latest driver, they only have the NVIDIA app install available. And for me personally, in today's video, I'm gonna be recommending against the NVIDIA app, at least in its current form. And this is also going back a few months when I raised this issue with NVIDIA personally behind the scenes, where about six months ago, when I went to upgrade my drivers, I got offered the option to upgrade from the GeForce experience. And sure enough, at the time I thought, yeah, let's give this a try because at that time I'd heard so much high praise from various outlets online. And within about five minutes of installing this app, I then uninstalled it simply because at the time I had a desktop loaded up with a lot of video files, image files. And in today's video, I'm gonna replicate this exact issue actually right now for you guys on the screen to showcase what I'm talking about here. And basically it introduced what I felt was input delay to my system and it just made my system overall uh, more sluggish and this is why I instantly uninstalled it because I noticed this as soon as I installed the NVIDIA app and in fact in September when I went to NVIDIA's event to talk to them about their AI and check out they were showcasing their AI products and how it can interact with games and make your gaming experience better they asked at the end do you have any um, uh, questions about NVIDIA products and services and I said to them at that time I said oh uh, actually I do have a question and that is uh, why is the NVIDIA app uh, so much more sluggish and unresponsive than the GeForce experience? And everyone in the room then just took a step back and went, whoa, like, what is this guy talking about? And I just said, yeah, like I installed the app and I just noticed things were a bit more sluggish. And I told them the whole thing. I said, granted, I have loaded up about 200 gigabytes of files on my desktop because at any given time I can sometimes have a couple of video projects going on with YouTube and I just wanna uh, finish them all off. And then after that, I can transfer those files to my NAS and be done with it and move on to the next project. And so that's kind of like my workflow. Uh, sometimes my desktop can get me very messy. And as you're seeing in the clips on the screen, you can see that the NVIDIA app is indeed uh, less responsive when I load up a desktop with about, in this case, about 200 gigabytes of uh, various video files and just image files and audio files, just all mixed on <laughs> in a mash on the desktop here. So that was my uh, personal issue with the NVIDIA app. However, in recent news, especially when I was scrolling on Twitter, uh, there was a lot of complaints about FPS drops with the NVIDIA app in particular. So in today's video, we're gonna focus on those FPS drops and identify what the problem is and what you can do about it. And ultimately looking at having no software installed versus the GeForce experience on versus the NVIDIA app on with both uh, default settings and tweak settings. So let's look at all that right after today's video sponsor. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. In today's video, we are going to be testing with the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D as well as the RTX 4090 on a Windows 10 custom setup that I use for my benchmark system that has VBS disabled. And of course, I do a few tweaks on the desktop to make sure it's just lightweight and there's no problems when I'm getting the FPS data for you guys for these particular benchmarks, as well as the system is using an ASRock Taichi uh, B650E motherboard with tuned 6200 megahertz CL28 with an Infinity Fabric of 2067. These uh, setups essentially just uh, giving us the best FPS possible, I believe, for a water-cooled AIO setup as well as an RTX 4090. Now with the RTX 4090, we leave that on default settings with a 60% static fan speed. And let's get into the results here across three different games at both 1080p and 4K. So 1080p, we've got the low settings there to test for the front end. That's the system memory, CPU, things like that. Then we've got the 4K to test for the back end, the GPU. And here's where we're gonna start off with Rift Breaker on the CPU side of things at 1080p. And we actually saw with the GeForce experience off the highest result here. And then also with the GeForce on just default settings, we got a pretty good score. And then with my own tweak settings, a in-between score there. And then with the NVIDIA app, it was also with a tuned a tweak setting. And we're gonna talk about exactly these tweak settings after we get through the benchmarks here, because it does have to do with one particular setting and that we, if we turn off, we regain a lot of that FPS. 
But here we've got the NVIDIA app default install. You can see there is a clear difference and the FPS is uh, actually significantly lower to the point where it is worth pointing out that having the NVIDIA app on a default install is uh, undesirable at best for uh, people wanting to get the most out of their systems. Anyhow, let's look at the 4K results at this same game. And here's where we go 4K high settings. We can again see roughly a 9% performance drop with this NVIDIA default install. So there's clearly a difference here to be had. Now, before we move on to the other two games, we'll actually talk about exactly what this setting is. When we turn off the NVIDIA photo and game mode filter settings in the tab there, when we turn that off, we regain practically most of this FPS. So it is to do with this particular setting. And keep in mind, if you turn it back on, it doesn't then come back into effect until you restart your PC. So this setting is the culprit for losing most of this FPS, whether it's a CPU intense benchmark or a GPU intense benchmark, but a little bit more on that later too, where we'll look at Warhammer uh, 40,000 Space Marine 2. This is the latest game that uh, actually AMD sent me a code for it. So I do have to look at this in a separate video with FSR 3.1, but I thought, hey, well, let's just check out one of these latest games as well. Uh, so there's no sort of driver optimizations that haven't really hit this game yet. And here's where we got the CPU side. We did see, again, a significant drop, especially versus the GeForce uh, completely off and uninstalled versus the tweak settings versus the uh, even the tweak settings on the NVIDIA app. So there is a, clearly a drop in FPS on this game on the CPU side of things, stepping things up to 4K high settings. There is also, again, quite a big drop in FPS with one particular uh, NVIDIA default app setting versus the rest of the contenders in this benchmark. Then for the final benchmark here, we've got Horizon Zero Dawn. I do like to use this benchmark as it's long, so it's very consistent in the results that it's going to give out. And here's where at 1080p, we're getting over 300 FPS on all configurations, but you'll notice that the NVIDIA app is again, just giving out a lower echelon of performance there versus the other four contestants. But it is interesting to see that the GeForce default is also giving out consistently, and I did test this over three runs, consistently lower performance too, albeit a lot less of a differential than the other results with the tweak settings. And then we move on to 4K settings. Again, we see a drop though this time around. It's just to do with that NVIDIA app. So after seeing those gaming benchmark numbers, you may be wondering what is exactly going on here and I'm gonna tell you guys my opinion on what I think is happening here. And there's actually two different tales to tell here because I believe the first one is the most obvious one here. That is the photo and game mode uh, filter setting. Having that on, that is uh, clearly causing an FPS drop at both 4K high settings and then also 1080p, even low settings for the CPU. So the GPU is clearly getting affected here and it's actually a significant chunk of FPS that is usually around about like eight to 10%, depending on the benchmark. Then we look at the CPU side of things, and this goes back to what we were talking about in the intro with that more sluggish uh, response times with having the NVIDIA app installed on default settings. And here is where I notice personally, if I then analyze those gaming benchmarks, looking at the CPU utilization percentage, as well as looking at the GPU utilization percentage, we can even see at the 1080p low settings with say a game like Rift Breaker, which is very consistent with its benchmark numbers, we can see that the CPU for lower FPS amounts is remaining at the same percentage, and then the GPU is using higher resources at that same point in the benchmark. So what this means is essentially, pretty much the whole system in itself is taking a hit in terms of being utilized for system resources. So at this point in time, the NVIDIA app itself is chewing up resources on both your front end and your back end of your system. And it's obviously leading to a very undesirable result where you're either getting, in my case, a sluggish uh, performance on your desktop usage or in games, you're getting lower FPS. So at this point in time, my current recommendation would be to not install the NVIDIA app or at the very least tweak it and turn off this photo uh, game mode and filter settings. Uh, me personally, I prefer the GeForce experience. However, over the years, I've never had any problems with it. And so that's why I suggested to NVIDIA, look, can I just keep the GeForce experience? I really like this. I like what you've done with it. I'm used to all the settings. It's got a more manual feel than the NVIDIA app. And after seeing these results, I, I don't really know what else I'm getting with the NVIDIA app as with the GeForce experience, having used it for such a long time. 
if something works properly, my opinion on that is, do I need a change? And the answer is, well, I'll try out the new product and make that assessment for myself. And with the NVIDIA app, it's like, well, actually, no, I don't need a change because the GeForce experience does everything I need it to do versus the NVIDIA app. And I just like it better. I trust it more. <laughs> I think there's less uh, that can go wrong. And especially after seeing these results, I, um, I'm certainly... Uh, very skeptical of giving the NVIDIA app another try. Anyhow, in closing out today's video, hopefully NVIDIA can see this uh, video here today, look at what I've presented and perhaps make some improvements to the NVIDIA app where in its current form, I don't know if it needs a lot of work or a little bit of work, but I'd like to see it in a much better shape than it currently is in. Because me personally, I'm used to using NVIDIA products and getting what I would call a either perfect or close to perfect experience. And this is uh, very far from that perfect experience. Uh, so again, back to what I was saying earlier in the video, I uninstalled this thing within five minutes. But of course, at the time I had the option to install the GeForce experience and I just stuck with that. And I think as a PC gamer and as a PC enthusiast, having choices there and having the options to do what you wanna do with your PC is always a good thing. So. Please, if you're going to go with a route where you can't really change a whole lot with the NVIDIA app, just leave the GeForce experience there. I really, I personally prefer it over the NVIDIA app. But lastly, of course, it wouldn't be tech yesterday if we just didn't throw in a little bit of a joke. Uh, when I looked at that button, it said upgrade now. Uh, perhaps for the time being, we should change that to downgrade now, uh, especially if you're on the GeForce experience app. And then, yeah, you can currently downgrade to the NVIDIA app and get less performance in your games. So <laughs> anyhow, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comments section below what your experience is with the NVIDIA app versus GeForce Now. Or don't you have anything on with your NVIDIA card? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.